Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for being here. Working on the spring project again. I seem to be uh, pretty into doing this, so thanks for joining me. I do always appreciate you being here. Hope you're well. Hope you're enjoying your spring if that's what you're into and that you're having better weather than we are. <laughs> it is cold today. And we are under a frost advisory for tonight. <sighs> and I thought spring was here and winter was gone. Ha, ha, ha. Teach me for thinking. So, um, what did I work on since you were gone? I think the only thing I've worked on since you were gone was I put a lot more French knots into this area here. So, just zoom you in a little bit. Um, and I just dug in my race bits and I have this, that's not the right one. What did I do with it? It was right here. Okay. I have this little, uh, lace bit and I just cut each one of these off and I have five of them and I like the way it looks. So we're going to use it. I don't know if it's going to go there though. I sort of want a flower here to sort of fill in here and have that um, stem go behind it. I have to figure out which side is up. <laughs> it's not always so easy. Oh my goodness, I did this once already and then I think that side's up. So hard to tell. I really haven't had a chance to do much um, with the puppy here because uh, this boy, he is rambunctious and he takes a lot of time and energy. And I want to thank Christine and Robin because they've been pumping me up, telling me this isn't going to last forever and I can do it. <laughs> I seriously, seriously have my doubts. Oh my goodness, it's been a challenge. He is a challenging puppy. I spoke to one of my friends yesterday who's had dogs forever, and she's two years older than I am. Um, she goes, well, I'm older than you are. I said, I didn't think you were older than me. I said, how old are you? She said, 70. Well, I'm going to be 68. She's not that much older. She goes, well, I'm still older. I'm like, okay, be that way. Um, <laughs> geez. And, um, she has a 16 week old puppy, but it's a bit, she's a bit bigger breed than what Tucker is. And Tucker is, I mean, he is doing things like he can escape out of the pen now. Um, the pen being, we have pen panels up, you know, they're, they're plastic, almost like playpen panels that um, you can get for dogs. Um, but instead of having it in a pen shape, we're just using it to close off a portion of the kitchen and keep him in there because he's a wild man when he gets out. I mean, seriously, he got out this morning and he was flying around the living room and chewing on cords and... <laughs> He cannot, cannot be trusted. He's only 11 weeks. I got to keep reminding myself he's only 11 weeks. <laughs> and that, um, yeah, I have two years of puppiness ahead of me. I think that's what's getting me so uh, frustrated and riled up is knowing that there are like, you know, two more years of this ahead of me. And, um... Everyone keeps telling me not to think about that part and that um, he'll be okay. He's a smart dog. Um, yeah, it's, we've had smart dogs, really smart dogs. And then we've had dogs that were not so smart. And like some things just never sink in. And um, so, yeah. But even my friend that I spoke to yesterday, Brenda, she, um, <laughs> oh gosh, 
we used to work for the same veterinarian uh, years ago, but um, <laughs> when I was telling her all the things that Tucker was doing, she's like, oh, he's way worse than my puppy. I'm like, gee, thanks. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious me. <laughs> it's not, not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> Definitely not what I wanted to hear. Oh my goodness. I was like, oh no. But yeah, so it's been a challenge. Um, the biggest challenge is him pottying outside during the day is not really, it's not very successful. Some days it's a little more successful than other days, but honestly, if he wakes up from a nap or wakes up from sleeping overnight, he's good. He's an angel. Goes outside, finds a spot, goes potty. But other than that, he is a huge challenge because... No matter how many times I take him outside, he will come and, and no matter how long I stand out there and no longer, no matter how much I try to get him to focus, he will come in and either go in his kennel or go on the floor. Um, I've tried the trick of taking him out for 10 minutes, bringing him in for 10 minutes, taking him back out for 10 minutes, and in that 10 minutes inside, he'll go. So my mental and physical energy has been very lacking. It's, it's a little sad, probably because I'm not in great shape. And we can't walk him yet because he hasn't had all his vaccinations yet. He has two more sets, which is six more weeks. And that's not even here yet. He doesn't even get his, sec his third I think he has two more sets of vaccination, the vaccinations, but he doesn't even go until like the 7th of May for the next set. And then it's three weeks after that. So we can't take him for walks or anything. Not that he walks that great on a leash anyway. And we're not, we don't live in the best dock walking neighborhood. There's no sidewalks. People drive way too fast, even though the speed limit's 25 miles an hour. So, um... Yeah, I mean, we can take him somewhere and walk him. But it scares me because, like, nothing scares him. And when he wants to play with the leash instead of doing what he's supposed to be doing on the leash and going potty on the ground and, you know, paying attention, he's busy trying to wrangle the re uh, leash out of my hands so it's it's been a little bit of a challenge now yes you can see green through this but we're we're gonna fix that it's okay i like this little lace flower i think there uh, maybe a couple of more might appear um yeah so I haven't had a lot of stitching time. My videos are going to be behind, and I apologize for that. But blame the dog. <laughs> the dog ate my homework. Um, yeah. So I've had a little bit of a chance to work on another project that I'm not showing on camera because I'm experimenting, and it's sort of based on what I saw from the retreat that Roxy girls the Roxy girls went on as well as Christine hi Christine um, and thank you for talking to me yesterday because you were a big help encouragement wise and um, let's see do I want to do I think I will eh, do I want to do color oh let me see I really, I have a passion for this gold right now. I've stuck some in here and there's going to be some more 
in here and in here too to break up those other colors. And I think it's just bright enough it picks up that that stuff really well. So I think I will go with some of this gold. Oh, this is a DMC uh, 725. It's size 8. Um, one of my subscribers, I think she's a subscriber. I hope she's sub subscribed. She says she watches on TV. I do believe you can subscribe even if you're watching on the television. Um, it's just pushing the right buttons to get there. So if you can, I do appreciate it. I have lost... Um, there it is. I have a needle MIA and it was on the side of the mat. I've got to use something besides my mat to put pins and needles in. I do have something here. I have my chicken. So I should put my needles in there. Look at that. Of course, I can't see them now because of the pattern. <laughs> put my pins in there. Look at that. And I have some clips on her tail, her little chicken tail. I'll put that in there. Okay. Yeah, I lost a needle off of this project, but it's in a box. Um, I stuck the whole project with a needle attached to the thread and stuck it in the box that um, is on the floor next to me at the moment that I um, put the stuff for this project in. I'm storing that stuff. I'll put her over there. And I went to get the project out and the needle wasn't attached to the thread. I can't remember if I took it off the thread um, or if I, hmm, hold, hold that thought. I wonder if I want to do drizzles like this or if I just want to do knots. Let's see. No, let's do knots. I'll just do fat knots, do four wraps. So for anybody who wants to do French knots, there you go. Four wraps is gonna make them stick up kind of high. So I think I'll do a variety and they can almost look like loops instead of knots. If you're like, if you were using a really thick thread, a wool or something like that, it would not be as noticeable, but Anyway, you play with knots. Just pick up some thread and a, um, I'm jumping subjects again. I just realized that. <laughs> pick up fabric and needle and thread and just play with knots a million times and you eventually get better. That's what I've done. So someone was asking me about where I get these balls of thread. So the DMC balls, I get generally Joann's, Hobby Lobby, or Michael's. Not all of my stores are stocked that well. Um, so I have to sort of go the route of finding a variety of finding which store has which thread I want, which variety of thread I want. So yeah, it's kind of hit or miss some days. I don't generally go looking for a specific color, although that gold I really did want. So I went looking for that. Um, and I just really buy it when I see it because otherwise it'll be gone. And I just saw today DMC, um, DMC floss, which is in France. All, all the DMC is made in France, in case you didn't know that. Um, they have a new wool out, a new wool set. And I think you get 30 colors in a set for $50, $59 maybe. Don't quote me on that. But you can go to the DMC website, and they, I got a pop-up screen saying, it looks like you're in the United States. Do you want to go to the United States site and I said yes and it gave me you know the prices and stuff in US dollars um, you can buy them directly from them I haven't seen them in stores 
So they're different from, from, hold that thought. Uh, they're different from this set of wools. I think they're a finer wool than this. These are thick. And I'm pretty sure that set is much, or that wool is much thinner than this. And I would like some of that. So I might, I might, I don't know for sure, ask for that for my birthday coming next month. Um, not that I don't usually get what I want when I, I just, you know, if I tell Tony I want to order something and he's like, yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> not that I need his permission, but, you know, we do talk over financial stuff. Um, however, you know, then I think, well, what else could I get for $59? <laughs> But it is a nice set of 30, 30 wool yarns, so I don't know that I could really... It's like $1.79 a skein, and I don't know when they'll have them in the stores around here, and I do think it's different than this, than this wool I have. I'll do some more research on that, and if I do get them, then I will definitely show them here. Um, I don't know if there's other websites you can buy them from, and I don't know what the shipping would be. So again, I have to do some research on all of that. Now we have a sheep and wool festival that happens. Um, it's up in Maryland. It's a couple hours away. Maybe, I don't know if it's like an hour and a half. I haven't been in, oh my gosh. Well, the last time I went was before the pandemic and probably maybe several years before the pandemic even happened. So uh, I don't know, maybe like 20, I don't even know if I've been to the Sheep and Wool Festival since we moved here into this house and that's been eight years. Yeah. So it's been a long time, but they have obviously sheep and wool, <laughs> but they have a lot of vendors. And a lot of the vendors carry cool stuff. And since I'm going to be expanding my um, projects into other things using the wool that I have, which is great. I mean, I have a lot of wool. I just, I'm not, I don't want to spin all of my wool. I will probably end up spinning some of it eventually to make more yarn to go into these projects that I'm going to try. However, um, they also have like vendors that have cool tools and, you know, like felting needles and knitting needles, crochet hooks, uh, you know, stuff like that. Anything to do with yarn um, or fiber. And so I have struggled. I'll, I'll talk about it in another video. And I will show my progress on the projects as I'm going along. But I don't know that I'm going to... It's, it's difficult. But anyway, um, I don't know if I can show them on camera. Because... I don't want to overstep any boundaries of what I'm doing because it's based on what Rachel, Sarah, and Christine, and the others that were at the Fleur Woods retreat, it's based on that. Though I don't know how they did theirs because, you know, they paid to learn that. On the other hand, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. I know, um, you know, imitation is a form of flattery, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I also don't want to, I don't know. It's hard. <laughs> it's, it's hard for me to know what's right and what's wrong. Um, as I said, I don't know the methods they use. No one has shared that with me. Um, I was not there. I would... I am hoping, if I can afford it, to take the Floor Woods online course 
when it comes up in the fall. I've signed up to be notified for it. <clears throat> However, you know, I'm sort of winging it on my own and I'm having fun with it. I really like this. Oopsies, except for that part. Just a few more. I want to build it up a little bit. Fill in some gaps. So, yeah, I, I don't know if I can, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it on camera or not. <laughs> it's complicated. Anywho, um, but if there are some tools that I can find there to help me with those projects at the Sheep and Wool Festival, meaning when I say there, if I can find the tools there. Plus, I think it would just be fun to go, but I, I don't know that, I mean, Tony doesn't love going. I'd like to find somebody to go with. Oops. And I asked, uh, one, of my, one of my friends came over the other day and I asked her if she was going. She said no. So, I don't know. There's another friend I can ask. Um, that way Tony could stay here with Tucker. And he doesn't have to deal with going up there and, you know, sitting in the van with Tucker. And we can't really take the van. You have to park out in a a non-paved, non-gravel field normally. That's where you have to go park. And we can't park the van there. Um, it would bottom out. There's zero clearance under the van. <laughs> Not zero, because then things would be dragging on the ground, but pretty close. It wouldn't take much to of a bump in the ground to have something drag. Trust me. All right. There we go. I think we'll put one more here. And if it looks cohesive to me, I like things symmetrical. I don't know if you can tell, but I like to have things symmetrical. That's pretty, and I like the way it stands up. Oh, I'll be doing more of those. For sure, for sure. Okay, as Christine would say. For sure, for sure. I'm not that off. That didn't take long at all, did it? So, that was fun. Do a couple more of those, maybe. I need simple today. The brain, when uh, little Tucker took his morning nap, <laughs> puppies sleep a lot. They sleep 18 to 20 hours a day. It's not enough for me, but <laughs> but it, it does help a lot. But during those 18 to 20 hours, most of that's at night. And the two naps that he takes during the day are about two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon. And I got to get other things done. I don't always have time to play, which stinks. But that's the way it is sometimes. All right, let's see. Could I make this one work? I wonder. See, I would have to take these out. This off. Well, we can do that, can't we? Why not? Maybe. Maybe. I can see what I'm doing. Okay, maybe, maybe not. White on white is almost as bad as black on black, but not quite. Black on black is impossible. I actually uh, did a weaving when I was back when I was weaving and making some vests and jackets and stuff out of the fabric I was weaving. Um, I, t I used black thread, and when I had to take something out, boy, was I cursing using black thread. I mean, even blue would have been e easier to use. It was crazy. <laughs> Black is just really hard. Come on, I just need like five sections opened up. No, I don't have a seam ripper here. <laughs> I keep meaning to bring one upstairs. Every time I see it in the drawer, I'm like, I don't remember that I need one up here. And 
then when I'm doing something like this, I'm like, where's my seam ripper? I only have four or five of them in the basement, but not here. Um, well, let's see. I'm going to have to take the whole thing off if I want to use the flower sections. That would be pretty. Let me keep going. If I have to cut this part out of the video and suddenly there's another part with me using the pieces, you'll know I cut out this torturous part. But if I can get it quickly, I won't have to do that. Somebody else asked me about needles. Um, I do not, I've purchased specific needles and I'm not happy with them. I buy a pack of sewing needles. The variety pack, the large, I don't know. Let me see if I can find my tin. Squirrel, you know, squirrels. They come along and Martha gets distracted. Okay, I buy a variety pack like this. And honest to goodness, I find the best needles in these packs. This one is pretty picked over. Um, but if you get some with the larger eyed needles in it, like that one, and you can't really see that. Anyway, if you get them with several large eye needles and then medium needle eyes and then smaller eyes, or better yet, if you can get a pack that is, um, oh, I don't have one in here. I almost bought a new pack to show you guys. But if you can get a pack that has um, chenilles in it, you can buy chenilles separately. But if you can get a pack, a multi-pack like this, just in a sewing section of a store, that's that's what I use the most. I've bought Milner's needles. Don't like them. Don't like them. I bought bouillon knot needles. Don't like them. They're too big, too thick, too fat um, for what I do. Now, could I use them with wool and stuff? Yeah. But um, I, I generally don't like them. So I, I use a regular, you know... There's those purists out there that say you have to use this needle or that needle for certain things. No. Do what works for you um, for the size thread or yarn you're using. And uh, the more you do it, the more you play, the more you find what works for you and follow your heart. That's, that's all my advice is, follow your heart. Um, I do stick with DMC brand thread and wools. There are cheaper brands out there. I've tried them. They have disintegrated on my projects and I won't use them. So yeah. And if you want to do your own, look up, uh, you know, if you don't want to use paint or fabric dyes or professional, uh, Procyon dyes, um, because of the, you know, powders and the way you have to mordant them and everything. Um, look up plant dyeing. You know, you still have to use mordants, um, but there are tons of videos out there on plant dyeing, fiber, uh, anything from, you know, cotton to, to um, now, let's see. I'm trying to get these petals. That's what I want to get. Or petals, the flowers. Let's see. I think, I think I have to take this off of it too to get it to look the way I want it to. Probably have to take the bottom off too now that I'm thinking about it. Careful. It's kind of oblongish, but that's okay. Oh, look at all the threads on my bunny. <laughs> Dropped stuff everywhere. Ay ay ay. I caught Tony saying that the other day. Christine always teases me on her videos about me saying ay ay ay. 
and uh, I caught Tony saying it the other day. I don't, I, I didn't realize I said it so much until Christine sort of brought it up, which is fine. I don't have anything against that. I think it's funny. And hmm. these might just have to sit up here like this and have, have their little moment. I don't know that I could put this in a, I don't know, let's try. Why not? I don't know if I have five of them. <laughs> now that I'm cutting away here at this pretty lace. These little scissors came in my, uh, with my sewing machine, my Janome sewing and embroidery machine, which I don't use as an embroidery machine because it was too technical for me. And um, I'm finding them to be quite useful. So, yeah. I need to remember to put a pair of scissors in the sunroom with my other, my wool project. My wool fiber, whatchamacallit project. Because um, I went to cut thread the other day and I didn't have, oh no. <gasps> Oh, bummer. I only have four. I was hoping I had five. <laughs> Where? Okay. Well, we could make it with four. I like the odd number better. Let's see. Right side, wrong side. I think that's the right side. Is it? Is it now? Yeah, because that side you can see the lines running back and forth. Yeah, okay. I'm like straining my eyes to see. The pollen, oh my good gracious me, the pollen around here is just, I mean, if I sound a little manly today, <laughs> or if I'm sniffling, <laughs> that's why. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, where do I want this pr fl pretty flower now? Do I want it down here? Sort of overlapping and running into here? Yeah. Okay. Oopsies. Now, question is, do I want it over that stem, sort of covering it up? Yeah, you can sort of see through that, can't you? Should I go over here? Decisions. They're the hardest. For me, anyway. I'm a very indecisive person unless I'm like, I want this and that's what I want and that's all I'm going to do. I, that's that's it. That's just what's going to happen, you know. Then I'm decisive, but I don't know. Decisions that involve anything else, anybody else, I'm really not great at. Hmm. I don't know. Should I just do these as separate flowers? Like maybe a couple here and then a couple here? Yeah, that's what I'll do. I don't know why I feel like that one's upside down. Yep, I think that's what we're going to do. I feel like that one's upside down, too. Yeah, I just want to fill this with flowers. So that's what we're going to do. It's just going to be filled with flowers. What happened to my needle with the white thread in it? I put it in the pincushion. 
got to get used to using the pincushion now. All right. I know this is so exciting or not. But anyway, I hope my little tidbits help you. Um, if you're a beginner and you're struggling, don't make it more complicated than it is. And it's really not very complicated. Oh, I don't know if I wanted to do that. I'm going to take that out. And yes, that means I have to thread my needle and I apologize. Oops. I'm using one strand of a six strand floss, which is, this is anchor floss, which is, I will use anchor floss. I misspoke before. Um, anchor and DMC, I will use. So that's that one. And it's zero, zero, one. Zero, 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 one. Because it's white. Um, I will use the anchor. I, I did say I would only use DMC. I fibbed. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is just go around the centers of these. Very. Ow! Yeah! So my other project, let, let me explain a little further. It involves using a needle punch tool. It's not rug hooking. It's like punching. Um, so you go in and out with this tool. And it has a very sharp point on it. Oh, Martha. Welcome to my world. And um, I have lots of hand spun wool in my stash. I have lots of wool that's not spun <laughs> into yarn. Um, so yeah, there's that. Now, could I spin my own yarn to use in projects like this? I could. However, I'm not sure how well it would hold up when I'm stitching it through fabric. Um, so I'd be a little, little bit concerned about that. Mm, now. Okay, I'm going to put that right there. <laughs> right where? Right there. Although, I guess I should try. I do have some I brought upstairs. I never really spun really fine yarn, but to be, oops, but to be honest, the yarn that I used in the punch needle um, is probably thinner than the one I used for this. So, you know, it's a neutral color, though. I haven't dyed it. Um, and wool dyes differently than cotton. It's a different process. And I got rid of all my wool dyes a while back. And I don't really want to invest in more wool dyes. So I don't know. If I tug it a little bit, like with this one, it puckered it a little bit, gathered it, gave it a little, little zhuzh as far as um, texture. See, it's pulling it up a little bit. I like that. I like it a lot. Play. Just play. Let's play. Okay, we'll just do the other two. And then I don't know if we'll do anything else because, you know, like I said, this is just <laughs> riveting viewing for you. But hey, as I also said, at least you're getting a few of my little tips and hints and having fun. I could put, um, I might put some beads in the center of these. That would be pretty. I think I have some shiny I have to find the front again because these flipped off when I. Oh, 
They went flying off when I flipped my fabric. Okay, I think I'll just do those there. And let's see. Yeah, we're getting up there in time. Is that the right way up? Yeah, that was. Come on, Martha. Get a grip here. So I'm going to put a little, kind of get it to pucker a bit so that I can, I love that word, pucker. Makes me think of a picture of a kid sucking on a lemon and the face they make. <laughs> mm. There. Could I have trimmed around the flowers a little more so that they were a little more, you know, you see the individual petals? Yeah. Oops, don't want to pull that hard. I love white flowers in the um, in the spring. I'll have to insert a photo here. That way I can look for it when I'm editing. That's why I do the finger thing. Um, of some pictures I took yesterday afternoon outside in our yard. And we call them yards here, not gardens. For us, a garden is only where you plant flowers and vegetables and stuff. Okay. Here in the U.S. Oh, that's a little, a little too puckered. We, we over puckered here. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, dear. Look at that. I'm a little overly. There we go. Ow. Ooh. Okay. I'll tell you, poking myself with a needle has um, definitely prepared me for little sharp puppy teeth. No doubt about that. Alrighty. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Put it in the chicken, not in the wool mat. Okay. That's not too bad. Let's see. I wonder where my shiny white beads are. I know if I get them out, I'm going to wake Tucker up. But sometimes that's just the chance you got to take. Shiny white, ooh, I have silver. I have little pearls, but they're awfully big for the, for these flowers. I don't want to use silver. I think I have some really shiny white ones. I just don't know, I don't know where. Ha, bingo, look at that. How handy is that? Right there in front of my face. <laughs> oh man okay oh you know what else I brought upstairs pretty soon I'm going to have to move out of the bedroom and because it's becoming the craft room very quickly okay oh I don't know if I can get a needle through these let's see though I think that's four I don't know how many I'm going to use okay now, this is where <laughs> uh, having a very fine beading needle would come in handy, but let's see. I don't think this is going to go through those, but I don't think I have. Oh, it does. My little, see how bent that is? It's warped because I grab it too hard <laughs> in my hot little hands. Those do go through. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to use another single strand. I 
That's funny, it's so warped. If I can get my thread through it. Now this has an elongated hole in it. This eye is an elongated. Ooh, ooh, I got it. Yay! <laughs> Oh no, I just unthreaded it. Oh no, I didn't. Almost. Okay, let's put the beads. I'm going to put the beads over to my side. You can't see them, but oh, maybe, well, they're right there. They're, they're right there. <laughs> oh man, this will just add a little fun to it. Now this is not going to be worn, and I don't think I can get two, two strands of thread through these beads. They are so minute. I couldn't even tell you what size they are. I'm going to have to do a whole bunch of them in order for this to even show up like there's beads there. But this is what I pulled out, so this is what we're going to use. Teeny tiny seed beads. For sure, for sure. See, Christine, now you got me saying it. It's all your fault. It's all your fault I'm doing this this uh, fiber project, too. The thing is, I would never, I don't think, I, I don't think I'm capable of emulating uh, what floor, but because I'm, you know, trying to do that, I don't know if I'm allowed to do it online, so on camera. I have not taken the course, like I said. I hope to take the online cor course from her. I believe it's in the fall, but um, it's not just going to include that. It's going to include embroidery and stuff as well, from what I understand. Rachel encouraged me. I spoke to Rachel about it, and she encouraged me to take it. It'd be wonderful. I mean, there'd be nothing cooler than if Fleur came to the U.S., but I'm not sure I could afford it. <laughs> A whole week course, you know, five-day course or whatever. I, I probably couldn't afford that, plus the accommodations, plus traveling to wherever it would be, because very slight chance, very slim chance, I should say, slim to none that it would happen here in Virginia. Oops. So that means I'd have to travel there and have a place to stay. And no one that I know would be interested in doing that kind of course with me. No one here that I'm aware of. Yeah. I, I would just like to find a group in Virginia to join that does similar stuff to this. There's um, a there's a organization called, um, oh, what is it called? All that comes to mind is EWG, and that's not the one I'm thinking of. There's an Embroidery Guild of America, EGA, maybe? And there are a couple of local chapters that meet, I think, weekly or monthly around here. I'd still have to travel a little ways to get to them, but I'd be okay that, with that. But I just don't know if they're very stringent by the book embroiderers. Uh, oopsies. You know, that's what the that group, that organization is about, is sort of by the book embroidery. And I don't know if I would fit in. Plus, I find it very hard to gather things to take to a public place. Um... Because eventually I'm going to go, oh, I want to put this in here, but I can't finish it because I don't have that with me. You know, you can only take so much with you when you're going to a public space and meeting people for the... I'm horrible at meeting people for the first time, especially if I'm alone. Oh, God, walking into a place like that is just torture for me. I mean, the anxiety I have about going and fitting in and, you know, are they going to think I'm weird or... Have they all been meeting so long for so many years that 
I, you know, I'm not one of them. Are they all more wealthy than we are? And they can tell I'm not a wealthy person because of the way I dress or the car I drive or whatever, whatever, or where I live for that matter, because one of the groups meets in a very, uh, let's just put it this way, uh, a higher cost part of the state. <laughs> so, you know, I've been snubbed before by wealthier people and it just, I'm very sensitive to people's interpretations of me and I'm very, I really am very shy um, in a group. I can do fine on one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes two-on-one, um, if I know both of the people. But if both of the people know each other and I don't know them very well, I kind of don't do so well. And yeah, I, I'm a very awkward person in public. In case, well, that's not going to happen. That one does not want to go over the eye. Occasionally you get one like that. Oh, you don't want to go over either, huh? Hmm. All of a sudden I was whizzing along and then all of a sudden I got a bunch that I don't want, that don't want to go over the eye of this needle. It happens. You just keep hunting for the right bead. And these are pretty. I'm glad I thought of these beads and found them very easily. And I didn't have to open the big case of beads I have, which would have definitely woken Tucker up. Imagine 10 little plastic boxes, not little, like, like this size of plastic box full of beads. And I have a big box of like, there's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe eight boxes on each side of the big box. So there's 16 boxes. Yeah. Um, it makes a big noise. And Tucker's in the room right behind me. Sleeping. So. I mean, generally, if I make a noise, like get up from my chair or open a drawer or something, he'll wake up and go right back to sleep because he knows I'm here. Um, until his two hours are up which has to be coming up quickly <laughs> because I didn't start this the minute he went to sleep either. So Oops, come up before you grab a needle. I'm getting in a hurry, girl. So in case I think I forgot to mention at the beginning, this is celebrate, um, no, Stitch the Season that I'm doing with Corinne. And she, I don't know how she does what she does. She's got stores that she owns and she's got a move she's been doing and that woman, she puts out a video every single freaking day. And I can't do two a week without, you know, trying to find an hour to do them and the ideas to come up with. She's a never-ending... Of course, she has Susanna to bounce things off of, and, and they're collaborating on a lot of beautiful projects. And, um, yeah, to have a, a, a stitch soulmate like that would be pretty cool. But again, I'm awkward, so I'm, yep, got another one. So I don't have anybody like that, sadly. Wish I did. I'm sure we all wish we had a stitch soulmate that we could. <laughs> I'm running into bead stoppages here. Hold on. Okay, that one liked it. Uh, a stitch soulmate to share things with and share ideas with and share supplies with and so forth and um yeah not easy to come by oh i didn't test that one so of course it's sticking oh, beads you're testing me okay 
Now, it's not in your face, but boy, that does uh, dress them up a little bit, huh? Should have put some more in that one. I got better as I went along. Okay. I'm happy with that. So that's it for today. Don't know what I'll do next. Don't know when I'll be back. I hope you will stick with me and bear with me because, you know, puppy. <laughs> I was just getting in a groove of things, and then we got a puppy. And I, I'll tell you. Don't, don't, you know, unless you're really ready for all of your attention and so forth to be going towards a puppy, don't get a puppy. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, uh, there are days that I wish I had not done this, but I love them. So it's real hard not to. I'll insert a picture here of Tucker as well. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it as always. Happy crafting and have yourself a great day and a great week. Um, and happy crafting and uh, follow your heart, okay? That's what I'm learning. Follow your heart when it comes to your crafting. Bye, everybody.